welcome to today's graphic design tip of the day. For today's tip, we're going into Adobe Spark to learn how to create an animated logo. Now before we use Adobe Spark, I just want to make sure it's clear that you can use Adobe Illustrator or any other free vector drawing program to draw something first to customize any design that you're going to be creating in Adobe Spark. They do have a lot of great templates and items that you can use to create your logo, but if you want it to truly be original, um, then you can always create a graphic first. So you can see here in Gravit Designer, which is a free program for vector drawing, I have an image here. I would go to File and Export, and we want to save it as a PNG file. I'll just call it Leaf and save it on my desktop so it's nice and easy to find. Okay, now that that's saved, we'll do the same thing in Illustrator. Um, so you can see here that I have a very similar graphic in Illustrator. So I'm going to go to File and um, Export. And Export As. And same thing, I want to save it as a PNG. The reason why I'm using a PNG is so that it has no background. I'll call this one Leaf Graphic just because it's a little bit different and save it on my desktop so it's easy to grab later. Um, make sure that if it does ask you that you do want your background to be transparent. Now going to Adobe Spark, um, this is the first thing that you're going to see when you go to the website. Uh, we want to go with the free starter plan, so click on Get Started. And when you get into Adobe Spark, um, if you haven't already logged into your account, you're going to have to log in or create an account. You can see that there's a lot of options here as far as different posts and templates that we're going to be able to choose from, as well as your automatic uh, saves of any project that you've recently created will go right down here. Um, you can also click up at the top left hand corner, um, the little plus icon, and it's going to tell you all the different items that you can choose from as templates or click view all, which is going to give you even more. And you can see as you scroll down all these wonderful templates to use. For our example today, we're going to create a logo, so I'm going to type in the keyword of logo. And I also want my logo this time to be animated. So to see some pre-animated logos to kind of start with as a template, I'm going to choose that sub option of animated. Now please be careful when you get to the screen, any of these that have the yellow tab are premium. So unless you're paying for that premium account or you want to um, purchase one of these individually, uh, make sure that you're choosing an option here that um, doesn't have that little yellow badge. You can hover over any of these templates and it's going to show you the animation that's already installed in it. Of course, you can customize and edit these however you choose to. Um, but just to get an idea of some ideas of what you could possibly do with your graphic. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this one here and create from this template below. Give it a second to load. All right, and on the main page then when you're in your editor on Adobe Spark, you're going to see that um, on the right hand side are going to be all your main options to customize this design. So if I click on any of the items here, I can change the color. Um, it gives you that template that came with it, but you can customize it, you can go to more, and anytime that you use a color, it's going to save it um, here as well. You can change the opacity if you want it to show through to the background. Um, and then for the text, the same thing if you click on it, uh, you can adjust the type of font that it is to make sure that it's going to match with the graphic that you're choosing. Uh, you can change your alignment of it to make sure it's aligned with whatever's already in your design or what you're adding to it. Uh, if you want it to have a shape behind it, that's a really nice effect sometimes, especially for a logo. You can customize the different shapes that you can put behind your text. And um, if I do want to change the text, if you double click on it, you can type in the actual text of your company. And if you do need to adjust your spacing, like for example, this is way too close together for my line spacing, you can adjust that. You can also adjust your kerning or letter spacing here if you need your letters to spread out in your design. 
Biggest thing is make sure if you're using a font that has serifs, so meaning those feet and tails at the edges of your letters that they don't end up touching. Um, if they do, it's gonna be really hard to read. If you're using a sans serif font, it's definitely way easier to have it readable, but make sure that no letters actually touch either. So you can adjust that right here. You can also curve or turn your uh, text into a circle. You can put it on a grid. So all these fun options here if you were trying to really customize it to fit into the shape. If you ever mess up or if you want to go backwards, there's also the arrow key up at the top. And I don't need that by that's here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. And if you hit delete or backspace on your computer, you can remove anything that's in that design that you don't need. You can see how you can stretch it bigger or smaller. You don't have to hold shift down to be able to do this. Um, that's important. If you hold shift, you'll distort anything that you're trying to grab. And if you want to rotate it, look for the um, icon either the top or the bottom that's going to give you that rotation option so that I can align it better into the space that's provided. And if you want to change the size of the font, it's going to be up here towards the top. Or again, if you decide that you don't want it, um, you can always hit delete or backspace on your keyboard. So that's the basics of text and just changing the colors of what already exists in your design. Um, now in our case, I already made something that I wanted to add in as part of my graphic here. So if I have something on the left hand side, if I go to photos, I can upload my own photo and find my leaf graphic. And here it is in the space now, um, so I can decide if I want that circle or not. And now I probably don't want that shape behind my text that I'm going to add in here either, so I can go back and remove the shape And I really want my text to be two different um, types of fonts. So I'm gonna choose one for my starting text. And you can see that as you move items around in Adobe Spark, it's going to give your guidelines to tell you when it's centered. So I can see that line was exactly centered with my shape here. The other option too, um, if you don't see those or if you're not quite sure, you can hold shift and click on multiple items at the same time. And it will give you those alignment options in the top right hand corner. So if I want to double check that they're all horizontally aligned, I can click on that and it'll align um, all the shapes there for me automatically. If you want to add text, you can click the type tool. They do have a lot of pre-made text options here that you can choose from. Just by clicking on them, it's going to add it automatically to your scene so you can see a preview of it um, if you're interested in using any of that. Or if you just want to add your own text, you can click add your own text. And it'll add that to your space as well. It's always nice to align your text with something else that's already in the space. So you can see that I'm going to stretch this so that it aligns exactly with my um, Christy that is above it here. And I'll make this just a little bit different of a value so that it matches with the design above. All right, um, other options that you can add on here if I didn't already create my graphic or if I wanted to add more to it, there's a lot of great icons that you can use. Um, I already searched for the word spark before, but if I clear that search and just go to icons, 
Uh, you can see all these different icons that I would be able to add in. So maybe if I wanted a leaf like I had drawn already, I can search for that. Again, make sure you're not choosing anything that's a pro um, item, but if you click on it, it'll add it right into your space. Um, avoid just using a single symbol by itself if you're adding one to your design. Try to customize and create a shape by combining multiple of these together if you're going to do that so it's not just one of the symbols that comes with the program. If you want to customize the color of this, uh, click on the color option here, and just like we did before, you can choose it from the color palette. Um, if you are using Adobe Color, which is highly recommended, you can copy and paste the color code from Adobe Color right here too to make sure it's exactly what you're looking for. So as an example, if I grab this one and maybe this one, you can start to play around with the overlap. Um, if you do want to change the order of these as you're stacking them to recreate the symbol that you want, your layer order is right here. So maybe this one in the back, I want it to be in front. So I can click all the way at the top, the move to top option, um, and I can adjust where that's going to sit with the other ones. So as you can see, you can customize and stack shapes to really create a custom logo, um, especially for somebody who is not necessarily a graphic designer, graphic artist, uh, to be able to create a really nice logo using Adobe Spark. There's also design assets. So um, more than just the icon where those are just solid filled shapes, these have a lot more. There's also some animated ones that you can choose. Again, just be careful of the premium options here. Um, but here's an element example. So a little bit more texture and pizzazz than just the icons have. You can use those to create your logo as well. Backgrounds, we really don't want a background for a logo because the logo is meant to go on whatever background it's going to be published on. But in future projects, this might be a great option to use. Um, as far as logos go, if you were making something for a specific company and you were always using that company's logo, you can upload your logo here so that anything that you open in um, your Spark account is going to automatically have that logo that you can grab and add right into your product. You can also attach your Adobe libraries if you're using Illustrator or Photoshop um, and you have a lot of stuff that you're saving for a specific project so that you can open it up right here um, and grab that information and add it into your space. Um, other than colors on the right hand side, you can also animate your space. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a peek at that. You can see that there's all these fun text animation options. So if I click on my text that I added here um, and I go to my animation option, you can click on these and you can actually preview what they would look like. So depending on what you're going for with your text animation, there's some fun things here. Color shuffle will do it to the entire space instead of just the text. And then there's specific ones for the photo as well. So you can zoom it in, you can pan. Have it blur and come back. You can adjust the color, kind of like the zoom for this logo. So whatever animation that you want to add to your final logo definitely adds that fun dynamic look to it um, as your final product. Background, again, we really don't want to um, worry about for creating a logo because we want it to be able to go on any background that you're trying to create. A uh, resize option, really not going to need to do this for this canvas that we're working on right now and the design, the layout of your design, there are different variations that you could choose from if you're trying to create a specific layout, just like you can go back to your templates at any point and choose a different template if you're trying to work from something that they already have pre-made for you. When you are completely done with your logo that you have created, if you go up to the download option at the top of the screen, 
Um, the one to actually see the movement of your logo is going to be the MP4 video. That is going to be the one that you'll see it moving. But if you wanted to put this on something as just a regular static image, you can save it as either a JPEG, which will have a background, or a PNG, which is going to allow you to save it as a transparent image. Maybe you're putting it on a website or um, printing it on top of another image. That would be a good option to make sure that it has no background attached to it. So for my example, I'm gonna download that MP4 file. Okay, and here it is at the bottom of my screen. I can go to Show and Finder. And if you open that up, you should be able to play your animation. Uh, you can add it onto whatever you are creating then to have an actual playing animation for your logo. I hope you enjoyed today's graphic design tip of the day.